the lace and albatross chicks that we're raising, they have a lot of personality. When you first look at them, you wouldn't realize that how much variation there is among different birds, but there really is. Yeah, you're a feisty one, aren't you? Yeah, he's got lots of energy. We like him. Lots of sass. Five is next. Oh, five. Are we, are we ready? Hey, buddy. This one is a, I know, buddy. You'll be pretty when you grow up, I promise. 33. There are more than a million of them worldwide, but about 98% of them nest in the northwestern Hawaiian Islands, most of which have a maximum elevation of about two or three meters. In 2011, the tsunami from Japan wiped out tens of thousands of nests. And even before that, in the same year, there was a high wave event that wiped out tens of thousands more. Most people are not aware of that. And that's expected to happen with increasing frequency. The islands that most of these birds nest on may not be here that much longer. One way to combat that is to try to create new colonies on higher islands. We're trying to create a new colony in the north shore of Oahu by moving eggs from Kauai, where they come from a military base where they nest next to an active runway and they're an airstrike hazard with the aircraft. So we take those eggs, move them to Oahu, we place them temporarily in foster nests, and then once the chicks hatch, we move them to the refuge and raise them by hand for five months. But the hope is that they will then imprint on that site, and then when they are adults themselves in a few years, return to that site and begin nesting there. It's gonna take a long time, but I like to think about the fact that 10, 15 years from now, we'll have an albatross population based on what we're doing now. And I, I think that's really special because that's gonna be a population that's well above sea level rise for a long time when we start losing the land on the Northwestern Islands. You're doing something now. We're getting ahead of the game. A lot of conservation work tends to be reactionary in nature. People identify a problem or a threat and try to do something about it. And that's understandable, and in most cases, that's, that's required. But there are some threats that we, we know about already. We know it's going to be a problem. And I think it's important to try to be proactive about trying to address some of these threats before it's an emergency. People come in from the five boroughs. They come in with a bird in hand. And they've gone to a great deal of trouble to find us. They take off half the day to rescue this bird.